Hi, welcome back to Mr. Mobile PC Blog. My name's Hugo Ortega. Now, in follow up from my last video, the Vivo Tab by ASUS, um, I've got another hybrid style device. Now, the ASUS was a real consumer driven device, light, uh, go anywhere, um, quite fast uh, with the NVIDIA quad core processor. But what I've got for you is something totally different. Um, and, and not by way of it's not a hybrid, because it is another hybrid, which is typical of today's um, really where we're going with tablets. They're actually more popular than the Slate style devices now. Um, but the hybrid itself I've got today is a business style hybrid. And what I mean by that, there's a couple of features and differences in build quality, which makes this a, a real 24 by 7 tool as opposed to a, uh, a secondary device where the ASUS possibly is a secondary device this one could actually be a primary device and so what is it? it's the Fujitsu Q702 now the ASUS was a 10.1 inch hybrid this is an 11.6 inch hybrid device now if you're I'm repeating this term hybrid 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 what is it? Well, it's quite simple. If you've seen the video before, you'd know. But if you haven't, what it is, is it's effectively the tablet computer with the touchscreen and the keyboard and also the ability to remove both. So slate, keyboard for traditional notebook and hybrid by having combined both together in one machine. Now, going around this machine, we're going to cover off some of the um, unique features. Um, but just in, in, in comparison to the ASUS Vivo tab, we've also got in here, in the docking station. So let's go through the docking station first. So here's a dock. You've got a battery. Now, it's good for five hours. Um, the actual screen is good for another four hours, the internal screen battery. But the, the main difference between an ASUS Vivo tab, and which is consumer driven, and this style of device, is that this battery is removable. Have a look at that. So, how do we do that? Let's see. Unlock. Hold button. So there you have it. It's actually removable. Now, it makes for quite a light keyboard now, but also what you've got is the ability to have a second battery on charge and take it with you on the road so that on the fly, you can actually be removing and, and replacing batteries to give you that real ultra tablet feeling of being out all day, not being worried about taking even an AC adapter with you. So as I say, this is a um, 45 watt hour battery, so good for about five hours. The other tablet itself has a 30 watt hour battery, good for about four. So all up nine hours. I would have hoped for a little bit more on these devices, given especially that um, you've got such a large battery, but the larger the screen, um, and sc screen being the largest consumer of battery life, the uh, less battery, so that's what happens. Um, going around the dock, what we've got is, there's obviously your docking um, plate. It's not as uh, sexy as the uh, ASUS Vivo tab with its um, what they call that invisible sort of seal. Um, this one is quite visible, but it's it's it, again being a business tool, it's going to be derived from something that's probably more sturdy long term than the ASUS. Um, you know, we haven't really tested that long term, but probably more sturdy given Fujitsu has such a heritage in tablets. You've got your quick quick release there lever to dock the tablet on and off. As we go around. We've got a, um, a, the AC port to plug in the power adapter, the VGA port for its traditional VGA cable, USB 2.0 speed port there. Come around the front, there's nothing there, so quite minimalistic as usual with these. Here, quite oddly, is your um, stylus dock. So that's where you actually place your stylus, and I'll explain why I say quite oddly. Um, as we come forward, that's the removal clip for the stylus, so it has a little ejector. Uh, we've got an, another USB 2 port and an Ethernet port. Okay. Now the reason I say oddly is that the tablet itself does not have anywhere... There's my stylus on the tether. It does not have anywhere to actually dock the stylus. Okay. But the dock does. So what bugged me a couple of times 
and it's really just because I have so many of these devices that I can be anal about these little things. But once I released uh, from the dock itself, I still had my tether attached to the dock. <laughs> so uh, I had to sort of put the tablet down, um, come down here, quick release the stylus and grab the stylus. No worries, it's not the end of the world, but it's a, it's a feature that I would have preferred to have permanent place on my tablet to have the stylus so that when I removed it, because normally I'm going to be using inking mode when I'm on the, um, on the slate itself, not when I'm docked. I would have preferred it to be on the dock itself. Off the dock itself, on the tablet itself. So let's look at the tablet. So as we go around regarding ports, one um, great feature that you'll see here obviously is the blue colored USB 3 speed port. So much faster than the USB 2 style ports. This is your multi-card reader for an SD card in particular. Here's your um, uh, power connector again to charge the unit with the AC. Speakers are at the bottom, which actually does a nice job because you can actually get a, a, a better sound coming out than when they're at the rear. Um, uh, then you've got docking ports here for when you're docked. Speaker again. So we're on the right hand side now, fascia. Another USB 2 port. So you've got actually three USB 2 ports and a USB 3 port. That's a total of four USB ports. Pretty good for a tablet. A full size HDMI port. So none of those fiddly stupid mini HDMI. Then you've got an array here of, um, of connections, uh, uh, sorry, of switches. So you've got your power. You've got your screen lock button, which works really, really well. You've got your, uh, let me just confirm. Yep, volume, up and down. And then you've got the um, uh, auto rotate on and off. And here you've got your Wi-Fi on and off, so you can turn Wi-Fi on and off there. Um, obviously a, a, a nice addition is the headphone jack and the microphone jack, which is pretty common. And uh, the touchscreen, so the touchscreen itself is 11.6 inches, we said. HD display, although it doesn't pump out full HD um, resolution, we've got 1366 by 768. Um, so a 16 by 9 letterbox aspect, aspect ratio, which is still really great um, and crisp. It's an IPS display, not IPS Plus. I would have wished it was IPS Plus like the ASUS. The plus symbol highlights um, screen brightness. So it's not as bright, as vibrant as the ASUS was, but it's still a lovely display. So this is it in direct sunlight. But you can see it gets a little bit washed out if it's direct sunlight. But that's normal. The sun is is 60,000 nits of screen brightness equivalent. Um, these are 400 nits. So any screen is going to get washed out by direct sunlight. So, but this still does a pretty good job. So let's go into the touch screen itself. Now you can see when I'm in touch mode, the keyboard comes up. So I'm just going to touch, uh, type in there the password, which is password. <laughs> Real safe here for Fujitsu. Um, here's a, a lovely, um, display um, of the Windows icons, the active tiles. Um, we do have the multitasking, which works really, really nicely. Although I can, uh, let me go to the desktop first. Sometimes that helps. Um, so what I'll do is I'll call up a few applications. So let's call up news, let's call up Bing. Let's call up um, the sports channel. Uh, so what we've got now is a couple of open applications. There's the NBA um, sports uh, page, which I always like visiting. Um, you've got uh, Bing in there as well. And you've got, um, yeah, we can just flick backwards and forwards, the news page as well. Uh, Australian swimming in the news at the moment, and obviously Pistorius, uh, not for all the right reasons this time. Um, but we do have a, a really love, lovely display in size. I quite like the size. Um, when it comes to things like um, calling up a uh, document, so let's go to type uh, word pad. So um, there's word pad. Um, if we go into painting or paint and grab our stylus, to open up the page a little bit bigger. What I wouldn't mind showing you is that we do have a 10 point touch screen. So you can actually, um, there's five fingers. 
and I, because I've got to hold it, I can't do 10 simultaneously, but um, there's, there's registration there of all five digits and it goes up to 10. So I've had 10 on there you know, to prove that. Let's just do it on my lap. But there's another, another array of uh, squiggles for you. Um, so it, it, the WordPad actually supports multi-touch. Um, and not, not just two finger, but it supports all maximum digits that you can on, on the given screen. This screen supports 10 digits. Um, although having said all that, there aren't many applications that take advantage of 10 digits, but um, they'll, they'll come. There's some games are actually playing along that space at the moment. Um, one thing that I do want to point out is the Ntrig dry um, pan itself. So let's just open up a, a brand new document. So the stylus itself is um, is not a Wacom based stylus, it's an Ntrig stylus, now N-T-R-I-G. Now it's a major competitor and really the only competitor of Wacom, Wacom being the industry standard for um, graphic designers for example, they need really high crisp resolution uh, and DPI on, on the pen input, especially when you're doing detailed drawings. And regrettably, Ntrig just does not have that. Um, every time I have an Ntrig device, I get sort of less and less enamored with these pen devices. Now, if the stylus for you is really something you're only gonna use with a snipping tool, for example, to just circle something out and send it to a mate, then it's good. It's, it's not, no, no real dilemma. And you can see that by, um, if I go and, uh, um, let's see, paint and draw now, and I open up, um, the page a little bit further, what I can do is say, hi, my name is Hugo. And what you witness there is I'm writing, but there's also palm rejection going on. So by leaning on a touch screen, you've got the threat that it's, the computer's gonna recognize that as an input and draw a line. With the Entrig and Wacom drivers, the pen, has a hover point. So there's a point at which about five mils off of the glass, the screen picks up the, the cursor and knows that you're coming in with a pen. So that's very intelligent um, and one of the features that I love about having a stylus. So you can navigate better with more precise and more precision than your finger. But often with the Intrigue itself, you've got a, a to be closer than the Wacom. So the Wacom has like a, a 22 mil distance off the glass. Whereas these guys really are about six to seven mils. So you need to be a little more accurate, a little bit faster, and so as not to register your palm and have the pen input registered. But it works, it definitely works. As far as processor is concerned, you've got a third generation i5 processor in this particular device. Um, there is an i3 version, but I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. Um, you've got four gigs of RAM uh, running a 64-bit version of the operating system. So um, the, uh, they, they, they have some really nice features. As far as um, the graphics are concerned, it's an Intel HD 4000 um, embedded graphics, so shared graphics, which um, is not great for gamers, but definitely more than enough for Office, PowerPoint, Word, and, and Excel, for example. Um, as, as far as business features as well, you do have TPM in here, so Trusted Platform Module, which is an encryption module for data in case someone removes your hard drive, and you do have um, the fingerprint reader here. And while we're on the rear fascia, there's a five megapixel rear facing camera with flash, so you could record and take video. And on the front, there's a, another camera, which is really just described as a HD camera, um, which is a video based camera. Um, definitely not crispy for taking photos, so precise, but nice for taking video. Um, it's definitely a, a weighty device. Uh, it's not a light device like the ASUS, which is like 695 grams. Um, this device is getting closer to, to, um, to a kilo. Uh, in fact, uh, let's see what the actual weight is. The weight on this device is um, 850 grams. So 150 grams more than the ASUS, which is actually really not bad because you've got a, um, about a 10% increase in screen size. So versus the ASUS, uh, power to weight ratio, probably in favor of the Fujitsu device. Um, really that's about all I wanted to showcase today. If you have any questions, let me know. It is a lovely machine. Um, it's not thin and sexy, but it's definitely thin and capable. So probably more capable than the ASUS by way of 
um, uh, genuine x86 architecture on here um, with that ability to really, really hone in and, 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 and use things like Office, Excel, PowerPoint, heavy multitasking, um, uh, um, getting into your, your Active Directory domains. These will all support business environments. Um, so that's what Fujitsu is really um, based on and, and, and dedicated to. So they've done a great job with this device that way. Um, I do wish there was a house for the stylus and I do wish that they revert to um, the uh, Wacom based stylus for this particular device. But apart from that, um, the pen experience is, is refined. The touch experience is actually really, really great. It works very, very rapidly. And um, you can see the speed of the processor is, is, is um, very, very capable as well. So we can do lots and lots of um, uh, the touch style features that we're after um, on Windows 8 devices. So again, this has been Hugo Ortega from Mr. Mobile PC. If you need any additional information about the device, let me know, or just to chat, um, touch base with, you, with me anytime. Bye-bye.